Well, good morning, everybody. If you haven't watched yesterday's video, you might want to watch it before this one because it's like the part one for this is part two. Unless you just don't care about doing the Mark IV manifold top in your car and you're just a savage and want to watch one anyways. Do you. I don't really care. Whatever you want to do. So if you have not seen yesterday's video, basically I went to the junkyard, pulled all the pieces I need, and got all the pieces I need to do the Mark IV intake manifold swap on my Mark III here. Um, and today we're going to be installing it. So Greg's on his way over in a little while. And we're going to start knocking this out. Larry's coming back. We're going to test it some wheels. Uh, my friend Jordan's coming over. He's going to be rolling his fenders on his car. It's just going to be another day of a packed driveway doing lots and lots of car stuff. And you guys can hang out with us and watch. All right, so while I wait for Greg to get here, I'm going to start pulling apart my setup here. I'm going to start with the intake manifold. There is one, two, three, four, five on the top and two in the back, I believe. That gets this loose. Then I need to pull off my throttle body. Take all of this out. The lower intake manifold needs to come off as well. The valve cover gasket and like all these like wires that need to get pulled off. So, so we're gonna start with it right now. Everything is now out of the Mark III. I know I'm pretty fast. Let me briefly explain what I just did on my car. So I pulled out the OEM uh, Mark III 2.0 uh, airbox and the tube, the valve cover and the valve cover gasket, the top intake manifold and the lower intake manifold. There are one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven bolts that hold the top on. There is uh, four on the top and also four on the bottom, which I didn't know about, that hold the lower intake manifold on. The eight around, eight or nine around the top of the valve cover that come off. And then this is what you'll be left with once all that's pulled out. A lot more space over here. This will look a lot cleaner. So before I start putting any of those pieces back in here, I'm going to go through and clean up a lot of this dirt, a lot through here. And then also you have to disconnect the top pieces to your injectors and pull this line through this hole in your lower intake manifold. That's how that comes out. And then you can just dis reconnect it back when you put the new ones in. But I'm going to go ahead and clean this up real quick and then we'll start putting the new stuff together. And before anyone freaks out, I am taping off all of these so nothing's falling down into all the valves and whatnot. So that did get taken care of. Alright, got a good portion of the block cleaned off and a lot of stuff down here. You can actually see like numbers and things now. Um, it's not perfect, but you're not going to see it anyways. But I just wanted, there's like thick, thick layers of dirt kicked on like way down there as well. So it's looking better. I'm going to start putting the lower intake manifold on. All the few other pieces, and then there's one piece we have to drill. I'll show you over here. I believe it's this one. This sensor here that goes in the side of the 2.0 intake manifold, you have to put that sensor in this manifold. You have to drill. What they do is you drill a hole 
through here, put that sensor in, and you like epoxy seal it in, and then it works just fine. That's all you have to do for that. And I believe the plug that I got goes right there. Cause I think we're deleting this because I won't have that anymore over here. So I think the plug is for that. All right, things are still going smooth. Like I said, the block was cleaned off. I got the lower intake Mark IV 2.0 manifold put in. I have to put the new, before I put the injectors back into there, I'm gonna, I bought the new O-rings for them. So I'm gonna put those onto here on these ones because sometimes when you pull them out on they're old, they can get kind of cracked. These look pretty decent, but new ones won't hurt. And I got these from AutoZone. I'm not sure how much they were, but they came in a pack of four. So that was cool. So once the new O-rings are on here, the fuel rail and the injectors can go back in and then I can move on to the manifold. And well, I should probably do the Valkyrie next and then top manifold. All right, update. So I have good and bad news. Bad news, Greg is not going to be able to make his way over here today. But good news, I'm feeling motivated and getting a lot of stuff done on my own. So I'm going to knock this whole thing out today. I just finished putting on all my new O-rings. Bam. Be careful putting them on so you don't break them. Use something to lubricate it up so it can slide over pretty easy. If not, it's going to be a pain in the butt. But those are on. Down there, if you can see right there, that's the plug you have to, um, the hole you have to plug up. I used a half inch steel pipe uh, end plug that has a um, Allen key bit on one side and it's threaded and flat on the back side. They're called, you can get freeze plugs as well, but this is what I found in half inch. Um, and you kind of just thread it in and screw it till it's tight and that's that. All right, so all I have to do left at this point is get the valve cover put back on the upper intake manifold, drill the hole in the side like I showed you earlier to put that little sensor piece. That's the only part that I'm kind of worried about, um, but once I pull it, I'm gonna measure it, which kind of drill bit, drill bit I need, and then I need some epoxy to glue it in, so I'm gonna go to the part store and grab some of that. But I am, I'm almost there. This hasn't taken too long. I've been at it for probably about three hours so far, but I'm, I've been stopping to film, I've been cleaning and stuff, so it could be done faster, but I wanna do it as right as possible the first time, so we're making good progress. All right, let me show you two more things here real quick. This is the um, the Mark III 2.0 uh, throttle body here. All you have to do to mount this throttle body, it mounts up to the Mark IV one, same way. You have to just flip it upside down. So normally it'd be this, like this side would be up and you turn it upside down and put it back on so your cable is in the back to reach for your throttle. And then this is the sensor out of the 2.0, of the Mark III one. Untake that out of the three, uh, three quarters uh, wrench to pull it out. I have to drill a hole through this side piece right here and then have that mounted in. So if I can get the thread, I can just get the thread right back in and then that'll be good. And then I have to still extend the uh, the math wire somewhere in here, right? I lost it, it's in there somewhere. I have to send the math wire from the math sensor from here. Oh, here it is. Extend this from this side where it usually plugs in to that side where it's gonna be now. All right, gonna show you something that I'm doing on my car. You don't necessarily have to do it on yours. Um, your uh, cable wires little if you have this clamp thing here this is the little plastic piece that holds all your spark plug wires together there will be two clamps like this that go on top that would fit onto the old valve cover these ones are round that you can see so these are square these are round so these ones no longer fit like that's how it would go like right there but it doesn't fit in the groove anymore so what I'm doing to make so I can still have these so I can have something to hold on to I'm taking the brackets and I'm grinding them down. So this is the original one right there. So this is a new modified one. So I took both corners off here and here. I flattened this side out so it'll fit. So this I'm gonna take off this corner and that corner and then flatten this side down. So I'll still be able to use these brackets. They're not the prettiest thing ever, but they're functional and you won't see them anyways. But if you guys wanna do that, you can. I think I'll just like show you guys. All right, taking me a little sit break. I've been out here for a good little while. It's not too bad. Um, it's obviously easier with more people, but for never doing this before, I'm doing pretty good, I think. I have a few more things to do. I'll show you in just a second. And then I got like three wires I need to extend, one for the sensor, one for the throttle body, one for the math. I have to drill a hole for the sensor in the intake manifold. And once those things are done, it's just assemble, put it all together, and then it should be good to go. We'll start it up, take it for a ride, see how she does. But it's been, it's been a fun day, it's been a nice chill day just hanging out in the garage, you know, working by myself. Alright, so I have the manifold in here just mocked up, it's not bolted down yet, but just so I can see where everything's going to go. This is for that sensor right here that's off the Mark III. So that's going to go over to there, so I need to extend this one a little bit. This one down here is for the throttle body, I'm going to extend that as well because the throttle body is now over here. This is the MAF, that's going to be extended to go to this side. Once those are all together, I'm going to assemble all my intake stuff over here. 
get it all bolted down and we should be good to go. This wasn't too hard and it's already looking a lot better, a lot cleaner. And I'm gonna start going through this stuff over here because like a lot of these like wires and stuff and like hoses I don't need anymore. Um, the AC one's insane because I love my AC, but like this can probably go away eventually. So I'm gonna start cleaning up that side of the, the bay. All right, got my drill and my drill bits, my new manifold. This is the sensor here, how I measured for the drill bit I'm gonna need. Basically, I found the hole on another one and I just did that. So this is the closest size I have to that. It's a little bit smaller. What I'm hoping for is I can drill a hole in that one with this size and then just screw this one right in and then probably run around uh, silicone on the outside so it's sealed. And uh, so fingers crossed. I mean, I'm about to just drill a hole through this thing, so we'll see how this goes. All right, so how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna use a smaller size drill bit at first to get the hole started, and then I'm gonna work my way up until this one here. Normally, it's easier to do it that way. A lot of times, you try to use the, the normal size at first. It kinda makes it harder to get through. So we'll start with the small one. One down. Alright, on to another size. Slowly work our way up until my sensor fits. Hopefully. that let's see how much more I need for my my sensor here not too much more I'll show you here all right so this is my current hole that I have just drilled into sediment manifold this is the sensor here I'm gonna see so we're pretty close I you can see they're not let me just focus in on here it's pretty close to being able to thread I'm gonna go ahead and waller out a little bit like I said that's the biggest drill that I have so I'm just going to wall this out a little bit, slowly by slowly, and eventually this will thread in, and boom, I will have a sensor. And if you're wondering what size bit this is, this is a 3 ace. So 3 ace made that hole, and that's not quite big enough, so a little bit bigger than the 3 ace, and we should be good. And uh, a quick side note here, I'm sorry if this is really choppy and a terrible example of how to do this. I've never actually done this before on my own. I literally just learned yesterday, or Friday, whatever day I learned, I just learned like super recently. And so I'm just trying to do my best to explain to you guys, make it the best way as possible. If there's any questions after this video, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to address them. I think I've covered almost everything and even more things that I was even told. So hopefully this is a good description of how to do this for you guys. Hopefully. All right, you guys, I did a thing. And before I show you, don't judge me because just, just don't judge me. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I got that. And before I show you all that, let me explain why I did what I did. So the so sidewall on the Mark III where the uh, the sensor screws in, it's pretty. It's a, it's a thick sidewall. So the threads going through have a thing to hold onto the entire way. So you go all the way in and hold it tight. This, where you drill through on the Mark IV one, isn't that big of a sidewall. It's only probably like that big. So if you go all the way through, the threads on here actually stop and it just falls through. So I use some of this stuff. This is what I got with my Air Ride kit. This is a thread lock or like sealant so it doesn't leak. So I used that on the threads there. So the thread should be sealed, and I left a bit of a gap. I'm going to fill this gap here around with silicone, so it'll be double double tight. But it's in there. It's good. It's nice and tight. I torqued it down. Um, I got a thread lock all the way up and down it. So that should seal it from letting any air out. And then I'll use the silicone around that, and it's going to be double sealed. But I did it. Look, guys, I did it. I did a thing. I put a sensor from a Mark III and a Mark IV. I did a thing. So now while that sits and dries, I'm going to test my luck with extending some wires. I've done it a couple times. I'm not the best at it, I don't think. We have a soldering gun over here. We've seen it used before. So I'm going to see what I can do. I bought the wire yesterday, so I'm going to see if I can extend three wires. I'm really white and pasty. Wow. Hold on. There we go. So I'm going to see if I can extend the, uh, the throttle body and the sensor thing. Yeah, that, those three. Let's hope this goes well. All right, so if you don't know how to um, cut and extend wires, I'm gonna explain as best I can. I've done it before, so I'll explain as best I can. So what you'll need is obviously some wire. I have a whole bunch of 18 gauge right here. You'll need one of these fancy, you don't have to, but it makes it easier, one of these wire tool things here. What I did, I actually don't need to extend the throttle body, so it's actually gonna fit. So this one over here is for the sensor. I've cut it off, the sensor I cut it off already. I'm going to, you're gonna peel back the, the coating on both um, on this end and that end, then I'm going to peel back on my, there's my two up there. 
peel back the lines on there. I'm going to wrap them together. Then I'm going to use my soldering gun over here to solder the ends together on this side and then the other side to the sensor. And then essentially you're done. Pretty straightforward. It can be a little intimidating if you haven't done it before. But I think I have this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I just soldered and extended my first wire. I'm pretty excited because I've never actually soldered before. I've watched it done before. But so no one talking crap about my solder job because it's the first time I've actually done it by myself. But it looks pretty good. Or kind of, it, it's going to be functional. It's what matters. So there's the sensor, there's my extended wires there, and there's my solder job. Like I said, it's not perfect. Some of you might laugh at it, but it's got to be functional. So after this, I'm going to tape it up, make it look cleaner so everything's covered. But look, I did that, guys. I did that all by myself. And I know some of you might be like, wow, that's a terrible soldering job, but I don't really care. I'm proud of myself because I like to be able to do as much as I physically possibly can do. On any of the work we do, we always do it ourselves. I like to learn as much as I possibly can, do as much as possible I can, so I'm proud of that. I'm learning stuff. Alright, sorry if this lighting is kind of hard to see, but I have the Mark IV intake all mocked up over there. This is my sensor for the intake over here. The MAF sensor is right here, and I actually thought I had to go farther, but I'm going to run the MAF sensor underneath the intake right to, this is the Mark III 2 0 MAF, so I'm going to run it from, I only have like, you see from there to there, not too far, so I'm going to go underneath here. Plug in right there, get my intake hooked up. Once that's done, I'll be I'll be all set. It's getting kind of late if you can see, but we're almost there. Alright, sorry it's hard to see. I'm about to start the final assembly of everything. I know I said that a few times, but I'm actually I'm finally there. If you see this blue one here across the top, that is my extended math. There's a sensor there, so it goes it's originally over here, extended it down around, up to go underneath the intake manifold into there. Um, this is my throttle body. And then this is my other air sensor thing over here. Everything's going to be under the intake manifold, so you won't see it at all. And then also the engine cover will cover everything as well. But it's got cool fancy blue tape on it. I, I wanted to use black, but we didn't have any black, so blue worked fine. Um, I'm going to get the intake manifold put back on, the intake, get everything plugged up. And once it's all together, we'll give it a start, see if it starts up. So I started this project at like 2.30 or so. It's about 11 o'clock now. <laughs> kind of an all-day thing, longer than I thought. I could have had it done quick if I had some more help or if I had done it before, but it's not a big deal. It's done. I'll give you a better look in just a second. I need to start it up. We're not going for a test drive because it's late, but I will start it up real quick, make sure it at least runs. Uh, I'll give you guys a quick look at it real quick, and then I'll probably break it down at the end of the video how much I paid for all this stuff. And then on Tuesday when I'm off, I'll give you guys a better look in the sun of everything I did and the kind of like little tweaks I did to mine. So if you guys are trying to do this on your own, you have a good idea what to do. Sorry that the lighting is absolutely terrible right now, but there it is. Looks much, much cleaner. Now what I gotta do is start cleaning up more stuff down there and more stuff over here, but it looks really good. I do like, I like it. I don't know, I was against it for so long and I don't know why. I guess I just didn't like it, but like I like how it's black and black. I don't know, gives it a much more modern look and I do like how the Volkswagen emblem and the 2.0 kind of pop while the manifold's black and it's black. That's my new little pod filter. Yeah, so that, this is it. I like it. So let's see if it runs. Alright, let's see what we got here if we want to run. Sorry, it's really dark. Oh, that wasn't a good start. Alright, so it is running now, which had a bit of a rough idle that kind of comes in and out. I think I may have missed some, uh, maybe, vacuum lines here and there. I'm not quite sure. I thought I set everything up, but... Alright, so it's running now. Uh, the idle seemed to smooth out a bit. Um, I might have missed some uh, vacuum line or some plug somewhere, but I thought I got everything. Uh, it seems to be better now, so hopefully this means we're good to go. So, maybe we're almost done. Or, I guess we're, we're done for tonight. Alright, it is now midnight, and I'm going to try to wrap this up as fast as I possibly can. Um, as I clean up the entire garage here, I let the car run for maybe 
20 or so minutes, not a single problem after I plugged up a few of the holes that I had missed in the first time. Um, the first initial startup I tried to do, it kind of went off for a second and then bogged out, so I definitely knew or I had heard that I thought it was a, um, a vacuum leak somewhere. So I plugged up two more little holes coming off the manifold and that fixed everything and it idled just fine, no problems for about 20 minutes solid. So I'm going to try and drive it Tuesday, not driving it tonight, but idling wise, we seem to be pretty set. I'm going to put everything you need to do this swap in the description below because I'm too tired to try and say it all right now. Um, one tip I would say, it's a little bit more time consuming if you have friends to help you, definitely do that. Um, one thing I learned that was good that I did, I grabbed a lot of the extra hoses off of the Mark IV, um, like off the, the, on the intake manifold itself from that car and I just brought them just in case. It's always better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So a lot of those came in handy for this, I mean not all of them, but a couple that came in pretty handy. So grab a lot of stuff kind of around it just in case you might need it, if not, whatever. Um, a lot of people were asking me how much did this swap cost. It cost me about 150 ish dollars. It just depends on how much your junk card's gonna charge you or wherever you're getting the parts from for all the stuff and then what extra stuff you get because you need some wire to extend your math and your little sensor thing. You need a couple of, I can't, honestly, I can't remember right now. I'm too, it's too tired. But right about the 150 range, if you're going from a junk card, I would say somewhere around there. If you have a donor card you get it for free, that's awesome. If someone's gonna give it to you, that's awesome. Probably, I would say anywhere in between the the 100 to 200 range is where, where it should be. Um, I haven't driven it yet, like I said. I don't know power-wise, this and that. It's supposed to have better airflow, but it is like, you can't see it, sorry. But it just looks really clean. So I'm gonna be working on getting more of the sides uh, cleaned up even better. And then you guys can see it probably, first time you'll see it probably simply clean in November. So be on the lookout for that. But this has been a lot of fun. I'll give you guys more in-depth look at it in the sun on Tuesday. So stick around for that. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. We will see you guys on Tuesday. Peace out.